Hi, back again with another video. This time we're going to talk about chroma key. Uh, we've prepared some uh, chroma key graphics on Photoshop, sent them to the media player, um, sorry, the, the stills there, still stores on the ATEM. Haven't put them in media players yet, we'll do that in a moment. Um, so let me go over here and I'll show you what we have. Try and keep the reflection out of the screen. Um, okay, we have a couple of examples of chroma key in green. Now, you probably can't see the difference. I will get as close as I conceivably can. You can see there's subtly different shades of green. One is good, one is bad. They don't, don't differ by much, but they differ by enough to make a difference. And you'll see that when we punch the, punch the graphics up. So I have basic uh, complete, greens, complete screenfuls of green. So you can use them for testing later on, and I'll explain why. And I also have some uh, coloured blobs, square, circle, triangle, and a bit of white text. So we'll put those up on a, on, a full, on a background image and you'll see the difference that the green can make. And that all leads to making sure that your lighting in Studio 2 with Camera 5 is all set up properly. That's one of the reasons I've actually given you a complete frame of green that we know to be good. It's been tested, checks, and works. Um, with the right red, red, right with the correct red, green, and blue values to make up that green as well. The idea being that if you have that green to refer to, you can pull that up on the mixer, do a half wipe with what it's shown in through Camera Five from Studio Two, and you can compare the light levels that you're using in Studio Two to get the correct amount of green, correct amount of red, correct amount of yellow, and you can match that hue, so H U E that is so that uh, when it comes to chroma keying, you'll be in the right place and you won't get as much fringing or colour distortion. You'll see the example with the bad one anyway. Right, so back over to the mixer. Sorry for the adjustments in the chair. Um, slight change in the angle as well. Okay, I'm try and hold the phone without pushing any buttons. There we go. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull up a background image on which we're going to key our yellow, blue and red blobs and the text. So I'm going to do something like, oh, I did this yesterday, I was trying to do colour bars, didn't I? So let me just quickly do that. Okay, colour bars is set, and you see it's on our program output. To bring up what is effectively an upstream key, we go to key one, up here, and choose the source which contains the image we want for our key. Now I'm going to punch them up on media players. So We'll have, a good, we'll have a good chroma key and a bad chroma key, and they'll be on a couple of media players, so we can key them over the color bars. Back to the software panel. Actually, no, don't have to go to the software panel. Let's do it all here. Do it all here. So, remember we went down here. Since I pushed key, it changed my control panel, so it came with keying and stuff. So I'm going to push home, and I'm going, going to go to my media player. Push that. And I'm going to go to my stills. And the still I want in my media player number one. Actually, I want to leave media player number one. It's still got my nice graphic on it. So I'm going to say media player three. The still I want is way, is way, way up here. It's on 22, 20, 19. So you get down to the 765. The one I want is the good chroma green at, and the, those numbers explain the red, green and, back, or green and blue values. You can Google those if you want to. But I'm going to put uh, the good chroma on media player 3. And that will be there. And I want to go to media player 4. And I want the bad chroma, which is on still 5, to go on media player 4. So media player 3 has the good one. Media player 4 has the bad one. Right. From media players, then, we go back to key. So we've got key 1. We want to select our media player 3. And we're going to key that over our currently flashing color bars. So there's our color bar source. To make that happen, you push key one over here on the transition control, ME1, push key one. And you see what happens on the screen? Is it keys it in the preview bus, keys it on the preview window. So you can play around, adjust things without actually cutting it up to the program output, just like with all the other transitions we've done, things like the downstream key tie and stuff like that. Do the preparation on the left-hand side before anybody in the outside world gets to see it. Um, so there you can see you've got the yellow blob, the blue blob, the red blob keyed over the and the word text keyed over color bars. And if I turn it off and on, if I turn that key off and on, so if I do that, oops, sorry. 
What was I doing? Um, oh, yes, yes. Okay, forget that. Um, basically, what I want to do is I want to cut it up on the screen now. So I will push on air, or I can push cut. Either way, it will bring it up on the screen. So I'm going to use the on air button. And there you go. On the big screen there, you can see yellow circle, blue square, red triangle, keyed over color bars. And possibly not the best set of images. So I'll, instead of color blast, let me try uh, media player one. No, not media player one. Let me try color. Do I have a color? What have I got? Color two. There you go. That's keyed over orange. Okay. There isn't any orange. There's a bit of red, but it's orange. But you see there's no green fringing around there, no edges that you can detect that are green or anything like that. So the colour is nicely calibrated, nicely good. Uh, what I want to show you now is what happens if I use a chroma key which is very slightly off good. So in that case, I go down to my destinations, my, my source select, and instead of using media player 3, which I know is good, I'm going to use media player 4, which I know is bad. So I'm going to take, the, take, the, take my camera back, hold it up on the screen, and I don't know if you noticed, a very slight colour shift, especially there. This has gone slightly darker. So going from one chroma key to another, you can see it's actually making quite a bit of difference in the colour of what's, what you're keying over, because it's not a clean key, it's not a clean chroma key. If I bring up those colour bars again, you'll see it even better. This is the good one, and if you look at the grey bars on the outside edges of the image, they're still grey. If I go to the bad chroma key, they turn green. See the difference? And that's simply because the green is not quite the right value for chroma key. It's close, so all the main, all the main areas, like the red, the blue, the yellow, the text, they're coming through quite cleanly, but there is an effect on the background colours behind them. And to give you another, another bit of evidence of that, if we go and look at the vector scope, I can pull the vector scope up here, you can see over there, we've got the vector scope. Hugh, can I ask a favour? Mm -hmm. Can you change a couple of buttons for me? Sure. It's uh, media player 3 and media player 4 on the source select. Exactly right. Okay, so feel free, jump backwards and forwards. This is the, this is the orange, this is the colour bars background, and you can see the vectors shift as you change from one source to the other. And the difference that that is causing that is the, the effect on the background caused by the bad green in the chroma key. So that's why it's important to have the right one. And it took us a little bit of experimentation to find it. There are numerical values available online for that correct chroma, chroma key. And those numerical values are actually stored in the name of the clip that is on location 64 on the ATEM still store and it's called Good Chroma Green 0177 RGB and those are the red, green and blue values for a good clean chroma key. So what I was saying earlier on about uh, if I put, um, I'll just put that good chroma key in one of the media stores, so one of the media players. So I'll go up to switcher media players and in media player one I'm going to put still 64 which is our good chroma key so that's that one forget about the bad one for now we're never going to see it again hopefully so if I go back over here and you want to look and I'll disable all the keying so back to normal now we're looking at one of the cameras that's going on in the studio right now if I pull up put media player one there is our green, and that's the green that we'd use for chroma key. But the idea I've got is if you have, a, if you have material being shot in Studio 2 and you want to match the light, then you can do a half wipe between what's going coming from camera 5 and still still 64. So I'm going to put, let's just say we're going to simulate camera 5 with the bad green that we had before. I know we said we'd never see it again, but never mind. Uh, I'm going to put that... On media player two, so media player one is going to have a good key, good good green. Media player two is going to have what we're simulating coming from camera five, 
from Studio 2 where it's the, the light is not quite balanced. So one way you can do it is you can say, OK, we want, that's our good green, and here is our bad green. So you see it's subtle, shifts in, in tone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that our bad green is actually camera 5. You know, we'd normally push button number 5. But there's nothing on it at the moment. So I'm going to pretend that that is camera 5. And that is, my, that is the green that I've stored on, on slots, uh, still store 64. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do a wipe. Push wipe. And I'm going to choose a half wipe. Half horizontal, half vertical, doesn't really matter. Half wipe. And I'm going to wipe between the two. Now, you probably won't see this on the camera. Oh, there you go. You can probably just pick it up. If I get out of the way and I move it around, you'll probably see it. Yeah? That is the subtle difference between a good chroma key and an iffy one, one that's not going to work for you. I'm sort of hovering around where the, uh, tally no the tally name is down at the bottom, so you can probably just about see. I don't know if you see better on the big screen. Probably will. There you go. Bad. Good. Wiping in from the left-hand side. That's bad. That's good. And if you want to see the difference between those on the vectorscope, I'll probably be able to reach it this time. So this is a bad one. So you can see the uh, vectors are pointing almost directly towards green. This is the good one. And you see the vectors are more towards the cyan direction, so less green and more blue. And a little bit less saturated as well. Yeah? So that's the difference. If you have if you have your chroma key vectors pointing in that direction, it's not good. Chroma key vector pointing in that direction, more or less seven o'clock on the clock. You don't want it to be half past seven or eight. You want it to be more or less seven o'clock. Okay? And that's the idea, that's the difference. So I'm going to store and keep that uh, good chroma key on still store sixty-four. And I'm going to delete all the stuff that you don't really need. So I'm going to get rid of that. You don't want to keep the bad one. I'll key, leave this one here. And up here, I'm going to delete the bad chroma key. And I'll leave that one there for the time being. So up here, you, I'll keep that there. Delete it. Feel free to delete it. It's just a test image that you can use for testing chroma keys and stuff. Um, but the main one is down here. Don't get rid of that. You can always use that to compare what you shoot in Studio 2 with a good chroma key value. Thanks a lot.